Hello, everyone. I'm I'm very pleased to welcome you to this um, this pre-recorded series of lectures on applied sedimentology, focusing on siliciclastic rocks. Um, my name is Gary Hampson. I work at Imperial College London, and this this recording is introduced these lectures that were given as part of the Petroleum Geoscience MSc course at Imperial in 2020 to 21. So this is part of a bigger module, which includes both clastic and carbonate rocks with a couple of guest lectures as well. The overall aims of that module um, really work pretty well for what I'm, I'm going to present to you here. So the aim is to introduce the basic concepts of sedimentary fascist analysis and sequence stratigraphy. And the focus here is at master's level. So we're assuming a certain amount of sedimentological knowledge um, to begin with. We want to apply these concepts of predicting the nature, thickness and quality of, of clastic reservoir rocks. And you know, this is an applied course. So basically the aim is to develop understanding of how to, um, how to make these sort of interpretations using the sort of typical data we have in the subsurface, cores, well logs and seismic data. And how we approach those um, interpretations of those different types of data. So this is the module structure as it was given, um, again, sort of over a five day period. Um, so the first week here is the classic um, part of the module. The second part here is the carbonate part of the module that my colleague Cedric John has on his YouTube channel. Um, just to say that there's a couple of guests in here. So James Maynard from ExxonMobil, Mike Mayle, XBP, and now a visiting professor at Imperial College London, delivered part of um, deep water lectures. What you have here is a um, my lectures. So that comes down to about four days of teaching time, about 24 hours of contact time in, in total. Just to say that these recordings are only part of the material that I've made available and again under a, a sort of a pretty non-restrictive license which allows you to share them. So materials are available on, on Figshare and you can see the, um, the website address there. There are copies of the slides which um, I'm talking through now, copies of these pre-recorded videos as well. There's practical exercises. Um, not all the exercises that form part of this module were exercises that I devised, but there are six exercises um, which are, and those are available to download as well. Uh, and then the reference list to support the material that's, um, that's shown in the slides as well. So that's all available from Figshare on the, on the website address there. OK, and what's the structure of the course? Well, uh, this first session or this first series of sessions, so the prefix 1.1 to 1.4, uh, this is really sort of big scale introduction to sequence stratigraphy. Um, to really sort of set the context for what follows on what we delivered on on later days, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, where essentially we go on a bit of a tour of fascist models for common types of depositional environment. Um, and again, there's exercises to go with the lectures that, uh, for each of those different types of environments. What's in this first day? Um, well, there's a couple of slides that follow this that really sort of set the scene, really kind of give the idea of the of fundamental concepts. And then it, it's on to thinking about sequence stratigraphy. There's a little bit of pre-reading that I advise for the course. Um, again, this, this module assumes some prior knowledge um, at undergraduate level of sedimentology. Um, so a lot of what's in here, it, you know, is, is partly refresher and partly building on on, um, on the undergraduate level knowledge. So there's an introduction to sequence stratigraphy, the, the basic models and concepts. There's a little bit on, uh, you know, the assumptions behind those models and, um, you know, where and when they're applicable and where and when they're not applicable. And then there's how we use those models to, um, you know, what are the predicted, what's the predictive power of those models? How do we, can we use them for hydrocarbon exploration? 
but more generally, how do we use them to predict the distribution of different rock types in the subsurface? And of course, that has applications well beyond petroleum exploration. Okay, so you know, fundamental concepts and rationale, you know, why why should we be interested in in trying to understand sort of cyclastic sedimentology? Why is it is it useful? Well, there are there are there are two key properties of, of sedimentary rocks that are important in hosting fluids, um, oil and gas, um, CO2, hydrogen, and, and other resources um, that precipitate from those fluids. And the key properties here are porosity and permeability. So this graph plots permeability on the vertical axis against porosity on the horizontal axis. Um, these are for sandstones of various different grain size. And the key thing here is the different sort of trend lines and, and series of data points shown on here are for different grain sizes. So fine grained rocks, clays essentially have relatively high porosities but low permeabilities and define this trend line in here. And as the grain size increases, we move successively to towards the, the top left. And here we're looking at coarse and very coarse grain sands. So the key thing is, if you want to understand the distribution of porosity, in other words, how much fluid um, and pore, well, how much pore space and how much fluid can potentially be held in in sedimentary rocks, you want to understand permeability, so how that fluid moves through the rocks. Uh, it's pretty clear that we need to understand grain size, and an understanding of grain size requires an understanding of how those different sediments or sediments of different grain sizes are deposited. So that's my pitch for why this is important. The common tools that we use, well, one is fascist models. So these are these were sort of, uh, um, I suppose, developed and popularized by Harold Redding uh, in the late 60s and early 70s. But the idea here is basically we're looking at modern and deposition environments, um, distilling information about the processes and products in those environments. We're then comparing those modern environments to ancient environments. Again, typically we look at a range of different environments and we distill out the essential elements of a particular type of depositional environment. So in this case in here, there's a number of, well, three modern deep water fans listed, two ancient deep water fans listed. They basically form, they're sort of distilled uh, into form into form a fascist model in this case deep water systems so these low baked bodies with channels feeding sediment to the, the extremities of the lobe we distill out the, the generic features to form a um, a fascist model which has predictive value and that fascist model also you know provides a framework for making observations in new systems which maybe lack um, large amounts of data and they're a norm for comparison. They allow us to sort of identify differences and then to try and explain why those differences are present. Second key thing is Walther's law. So Walther's law of superposition essentially states that, you know, in a, in a vertical succession of rocks, which is shown on the bottom here. Um, so here we have a, a vertical succession from sand at the base through shales, coals, limestones, various types up towards the top. Well, it, if that succession was deposited um, without any break in deposition or without any significant break in deposition, then that vertical succession of rocks should translate into a, a lateral horizontal series of environments which moved through time and built up that vertical succession. And that's what this block diagram on the right is showing. So the vertical section on the left basically is, is the, the vertical sort of front face of that 3D block diagram. And you can see in here, each of those vertically stacked rock units corresponds to an, a, a different environment that's present laterally. Okay. And this is a very important concept because it allows us to look at vertical successions and start to think about geographical um, position of different fascist belts laterally, different environments laterally. Um, and think about how we might build up 
a stratigraphic section through the movement of those environments through time. But the very important proviso here is this assumes that there's no break in the sedimentary sequence. In other words, we just gradually deposit as the belts shift. And we're almost at the end of these introductory slides. The sequence stratigraphy use takes that concept and it starts to hunt for the breaks in deposition where Walther's law breaks down and doesn't apply. So in other words, we're looking at the fill of a sedimentary basin. Um, we're looking for unconformities that represent breaks in sedimentation. And then those breaks bound units in which Walther's law applies, and we can refer to those as being genetic packages. In other words, um, the fascist belts shift gradually through time. They build up a, a vertical succession which records that shifting without any breaks. Why is that important? Well, at first, it gives us a good conceptual framework to understand the distribution of, of different rock types um, in space. But also those breaks, those unconformities, they represent you know, surfaces that have time significance. So this, this phrase here, chronostratigraphically significant surfaces, basically the idea here is we're looking for surfaces that represent time um, during which we had those breaks in sedimentation. And you know, the, the sequence of geography uh, at its simplest level is an attempt to try to recognize time within sedimentary rocks. Okay, so at this stage um, in the classroom or in 2020, it was a remote classroom. We had a break and I asked the students um, some simple questions really just to get a sense of, of what they'd done before. Um, the students on the course had, had very different backgrounds. They'd been educated in different universities from all around the world. So just to get a baseline about how they were doing. So had they taken a course in sedimentology before? Pretty much everyone had. Did that course involve fascist models? People tend to be a bit more reticent about, <laughs> about replying to that. So that was a sort of maybe. And did that course involve secret photography? People were also a bit reticent about that. But this is a useful exercise to sort of break the ice before you um, you go on to develop the, the rest of the course. And it, it's also, you know, the quiz is set up so it's anonymous, but it's a good way of gauging the background experience and the confidence with those uh, sort of concepts that people have. And obviously you can tailor the pace and the content of what you deliver accordingly. Okay, so at that point, I'm going to stop recording and the next um, the next recording basically starts with an overview of, of sequence photographic models and concepts. <laughs>